This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com slash psychytruth. I have tons of awesome videos already ready for you. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration. Hi, welcome, it's Julia, and you're tuning into day eight of this course. I'm so glad that you're here. Today we are targeting our core, so we're going to burn your belly just a little bit. This is essential for any workout regimen and yoga is an awesome way to target your core because in this video we are actually approaching the true core as opposed to just the abdominal muscles. A lot of times we overemphasize crunching and that's not really what our core is all about. Our core is about relieving low back pain. Our core is about improving our posture so that we feel tall and confident. We look long and lean. Our core is also essential as a foundation for our fitness regimen so that we feel agile and strong. And yoga specifically is awesome for your core because in yoga, we're moving the body through all planes of motion. We're activating our joints in all of their different ranges of motion and we're toning the muscles that actually help support our spine. So we're getting it from the one muscular standpoint and joint standpoint, but from the nervous system perspective with our deep breathing and some of the meditations you may have already done in this course, we're also attacking be belly fat from the cortisol levels and actually being able to reduce the hormones that maybe aren't uh, helping us out in the core quite as much as we want them to. So let's get started today in child's pose. Come on down. So it's awesome to be able to utilize both angles to not attack our belly fat, we're not attacking our body, but take care of areas of the body that we want to address. Today we are going to amp up our muscles, but don't lose sight of your calm, steady breathing. So let's start that right here. Inhale through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. Just getting the nervous system, the brain, the body all to sync up one more time. Inhale. Wide open, exhale. Great work. Shift back to downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, plant down through your hands, lift your hips up and back. If you feel a little bit stiff or tight, you can move, paddle the legs or open up through the shoulders. Check in with your neck and make sure that your face is staying pretty soft. So being able to manage our stress response, especially when we are doing activity that is a little more intense, is great for building our endurance. And when we think about core strength, it is so important to have a strong core so that we can endure and persevere through yoga practices and workouts and fitness regimens that are a little bit more challenging on the body. Take a breath and look to your hands and then come to a forward fold. Step your feet about hips width distance, maybe a little bit wider, bend the knees and actually let the belly be super soft here. We'll tone and strengthen and draw in our belly plenty in this video. But for right now, let it be soft and let your head hang. Relax and unzip the back of your neck. Check in. If you can gently nod your head yes and no, then you know you're not carrying tension in the neck. Take one more breath in. And on your exhale, plant your hands. Step back to high plank. Let's find great form here in high plank before we move on. Root down into your hands, strengthen your legs. Draw the pubic bone up towards the belly button. And as you press down into your hands, broaden your chest. What that'll do is that'll lift your head up in line with your upper back so you're not sagging like this. You're nice and long. 
Think about one strong line of energy from your heels shooting back and the crown of your head shooting forward. Good, then hinge forward. And if this load is getting a little bit heavy for you, you can always drop your knees, lower all the way down to your belly. Untuck your toes, find one baby cobra pose. Lift the chest forward. Good, and then on your exhale, shift back to child's pose. That little flow we will revisit more than once in this video. So know that if you ever need to amend it or modify it to support your wrists or shoulders, you are welcome to do so. Take a deep breath in and a big breath out. Good, come to tabletop. So what's awesome about this video is we're going to mix yoga and traditional core moves. And we are going to do some repeated reps. And we'll start here from tabletop. Repetition is important for muscles to both move them towards a fatigue, which is essential if you want to build stronger muscles, but then also to build really good habits and very good alignment, creating that muscle memory for our brain and body connection. From tabletop, extend your right leg back, activate the foot, and draw the low belly in. You're going to keep both hands planted. Take a full breath in. And on your exhale, draw your knee to your nose. Exhale whenever you're contracting your abdominal muscles today. Inhale, lengthen it back. Let's practice that one more time. Exhale, draw it in. Knit the front ribs together, round the back. Good, so we'll do eight reps of that. Inhale as you lengthen. Exhale, curl. Lengthening on your inhale to give the spine space. Exhale on the contraction to help stimulate a deeper core response. Lengthen out, knee to nose. Long and strong, pull it in. Lengthen and hug. Let's go for four. And three. Last two. Last one. Good. Reach your leg out. And then we'll take opposite hand to foot. So the right leg's back. Bend the knee. Circle your left hand back. Touch the ankle. And if you can, grab hold of the foot. Go ahead and grab hold. Loop the shoulder head back and then kick. So this can be a pretty advanced move if you're newer to it. If you'd like to lasso a tie or a strap around your foot, you're welcome to. You can also just touch the heel. A little balance challenge here. Your core is essential for balance. So challenging those muscles right here. Good, lengthen the arm and leg back out. Touch down. Now tuck your toes, step back to a high plank. Hinge forward and we'll take our little flow. Lower all the way down to your belly. Your knees can always touch down first. A baby cobra pose, lift lightly. And then child's pose, shift back. Take three breaths. Three long and steady breaths to help return back to a calmer state before we move to the other side. Good, lift to tabletop. So you're finding really good form here on your hands and your knees. Make sure that you're pressing down through your legs just as much as you're rooting through your hands so that you don't stress out your wrists. Let's move to the other side. Practicing a couple slow to find great form. Extend your left leg back. The foot is active. Notice if you're dumping and slumping in your chest, stay lifted, or if you're arcing your back too much. If you are, draw the low belly in. Take a full breath in, and then knee to nose, hug and breathe all the way out. Notice when you breathe out, it helps you harness and hug in a little bit tighter. Inhale, lengthen, and do that again nice and slow, hug. Great, so let's take some repetition. Lengthen out, hug in. Find the breath to movement connection. 
long and strong on your inhale. Hug in nice and tight on your exhale. Let's go for four. Three. Two. Last one. Good. Extend your leg, bend your knee, and then circle the right hand back to either touch the heel or grab hold of the foot. Loop the shoulder head back and then gently kick. Continue to root down through the grounded shin and hand so that you're nice and solid in your base. Open up your chest. Great. Extend your leg and arm away from one another. Touch your hand and knee down and then step back to your high plank. Hinge forward, lower all the way down. A soft little cobra pose, inhale. And then child's pose, three breaths to reset. Hmm. You can take a moment here to roll the wrists as well. After tabletop and an extended hold, the wrists might need a little bit of relief. Good. Come back up to tabletop and shift back to downward facing dog. So we're going to amp up the challenge. From downward facing dog, hinge forward to plank pose. We'll take slow set of mountain climbers, just so you can learn this move, especially if it's new for you, it's great to start off slow. At any point that you need to put your knees back down to tabletop, do so. Good. So bring your feet seams together Lift your right heel to hover. On your exhale, draw your knee as close to your elbow or armpit as it'll go. Send your leg back and touch it down. So lift, draw in, send it back, touch it down. Here we go. For eight, pull it in, touch it down. Seven, you're doing great. Six, five, Stay with it. Four, three, two. Stay strong, last one. Nice work. Shift forward, lower down. Loop the shoulder heads back, a little cobra lift and lift. And child's pose, shift it back. Turn your palms up to relieve the wrists. Slow and steady exhales, especially if your heart rate just got really high. You might remember from our interval training day that letting your heart rate get up really high and then bringing it down with slow, steady breath is hugely impactful for the body. Helps us burn more calories and actually strengthens our heart muscle. Good job. Lift up to tabletop. We're going to take a supported side plank. So for side plank with a little bit of support, you're gonna come onto the right knee and spin the toe behind you so that you can step your left foot out. So as you position here, you may notice that coming up onto your finger pads of your grounded hand might be more comfortable, especially if you tend to dump in your wrists, or if you need to, you can always put a block under your hand. I like my hand nice and flat. Just make sure that if you do flatten your hand, you're using your fingers as much as you're using the heel of your hand because you don't want all of it to go right into the wrist. Good. With the extended leg, lift it up. Now, reach the top arm over your ear. And as you draw in, I want you to aim for in front of your belly button. So instead of coming up over the side of you, come forward. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, remember exhales for contraction, pull elbow to knee. Good, lengthen. One more slow time pull. Good, let's go for eight reps. Lengthen and pull. Reach and exhale. Get long, draw it in. Reach and hug. Four three, 
two. Last one, and let's hold on this one. Breathe all the way out, find the contraction deep in the belly, and then touch down. Take a little cow and cat to relieve the spine. Inhale into your cow, and then round the spine. Exhale into your cat, press into your hands. One more time, cow pose. And one more time, cat. Good, so let's take that on the other side. Extend your opposite leg out, and again, find a nice position for your hand so that you feel supported and you're not dumping into the wrist. Now lift the leg and extend the top arm over your ear. We'll do a couple so. So as you exhale, pull in and let your elbow and knee meet or as come as close to meeting as you can in front of the body instead of above you. So you're hugging towards. And if you don't quite touch, that's totally fine. Take the action of them touching. Then reach out and breathe in so you feel that big length. And then exhale, hug in, either as close as you can or actually touch. Good, so let's take some repetition. Lengthen and draw in. Lengthen, hug. So you're breathing in as you reach out. Exhale as you draw in. Lengthen, squeeze. Let's go for four, three, two, last one. Good, reach it all the way out and drop your hand and knee down. Shift back to child's pose. Take a few open mouth exhales to release some heat. Great job. Come up to a seat and we're gonna come all the way down onto the belly. So lower yourself down. So when we think about the core, it's sort of old school thinking to think of the six pack because actually your core has so many different layers of muscle. And one of the great things about yoga is that we are targeting all of those layers. One layer that we often forget about are the muscles that actually line our spine, the backside of our core. So we'll strengthen those muscles here with some locust lifts. So extend your arms out to your side. Lift your arms up and then send your fingertips as far back as they'll go, then lift your head. So you're thinking about lifting from the back of the heart first and then the head so that you're keeping the neck safe. If this feels like plenty for you, then you just keep your legs down. If you'd like to lift the legs and you have no low back pain, lift your feet off the ground. Take another breath in and then lower. We'll find some repetition with that movement, linking our breath with our movement. Inhale as you come up, exhale lower. Lift and lower. Keep your head in line with your upper back as you lift and lower. Reach through your fingers and toes as you lift and lower. Let's take four more. Four, three, everything up. Two, and let's hold up on one, all the way up as high as you can go. And then take in a little sip of air, lift higher, and all the way down. Stack your hands, lay your forehead down, and then wash your heels side to side. Hmm. That little bit of movement in the hips and the legs just releases the tension in the low back. And then this belly down breathing, we can increase our nervous system response towards rest and digest by focusing some breath right into the low belly. Relax the legs still and breathe into the low abdomen just one time. And a big open mouth exhale. <sighs> So coming off that activity into something calmer. Good. Then just flip onto your back. 
From here, we'll do some more traditional core work. All right, so now that we have gotten the deep layers of our core, we've worked our body from all these different angles, we will do some traditional crunches, but really just to target the upper part of the rectus abdominis, so the top part of the quote unquote six pack. So draw the belly button down to the spine. You don't have to flatten the back really, just find that hug. And then take your hands by your ears. I like to think like I'm putting on earmuffs, right? So I'm not holding the neck or moving the neck a lot, but instead just cradling the head. Draw your elbows just into the peripheral vision, not too wide, not too tight. And then knit the front ribs in. As you move into the crunch, you want to think about moving the shoulder blades off the earth and then gently back down. It's not a huge movement. Lift and lower. So what might be a little bit different about crunches is that we actually exhale as we lift because that's the contraction, all right? So on your inhale, lay the head back. On your exhale, lift the shoulder blades off the mat. Lower and repeat. If you don't move very far on your first few, that's okay. You wanna keep the head steady and stable so you're not jazzing out the neck. Use the inhales to draw the front ribs together and lift the shoulder blades off the yoga mat. You're doing great. Let's go for four more. Four and lower. Three and lower. Two. Hold up on one. Hold up, lift as high as you can go. Continue to breathe, four, three, two, all the way down on one. Relax your arms and just rock the knees side to side. Once I started doing yoga, I realized how much time I was wasting doing thousands of crunches. <laughs> you really don't need to do that many. Instead, it's so much more important that you're working the body in all the angles, which you've done. So let's move into our final exercise of this video, yogi bicycles. Tabletop the shins and know that at any time, if you need to come to static or still legs, you can take out the pedaling of the bicycle and just keep your legs in the middle. Fingertips back by the ears, elbows are wide into the peripheral vision. Take a breath in, lift the shoulder blades just like you did in the crunch and then twist opposite elbow to knee. If you want to add the legs, Extend one leg and draw the opposite knee in. Inhale through the center, switch sides. You're just finding that connection. Maybe your elbow and your knee touch, maybe they don't. It's not really that important that they do. Instead, what you wanna feel is this up and over lift. Inhale through center, let's get going with our breath. Exhale to twist. Lengthen, twist, lengthen, twist and remember you can keep your legs still and just move the upper body that's totally fine continue to utilize breath with movement let's go four more four on each side three you're doing great Last two. Last one. Good, lay the head down and hug the knees to your chest. Rock side to side. Good, and then just drop both of your knees over to the right, take a little supine twist and start to relax your breath. One thing that muscles don't do is they don't spot reduce a certain section. So it's important to have a holistic approach to your weight loss. It's impossible to say, I only wanna lose weight in this specific area of the body. But what we can do is make certain muscles stronger so that we improve our posture. So we feel stronger in all of our activities. Switch sides. And our core strength is one of those essential elements to our fitness and our yoga exercises so that we feel strong and capable 
regardless of what's being thrown at us. With belly fat in particular, we know that when we start to couple muscle building along with healthy habits and stress reduction, we're giving our body the best chance it has to start to shed some of the excess that it's hanging on to. And belly fat in particular is something that sometimes we feel self-conscious about. But when we know that our core is strong and capable, we can have confidence right now. You don't have to wait till the end of this 30 days or wait until next year. You can feel strong right where you're at. So extend your legs out and come into a little Shavasana. This deep rest is probably the healthiest habit you can adopt in this course. Just finding time to deeply breathe. Let the arms relax out and you might even feel some residual heat in the belly. That's a satisfying feeling. You worked really, really hard. Now reap the rewards of deep rest and slow and steady breathing. Just a few breaths in and out. One more time. Biggest exhale of your day. Good, stretch the arms, point your toes, roll to your side. And press yourself up to a seat. Let's join with our hands and our heart. I know that building habits is a one day at a time thing and you showed up today. Great job. Can't wait to see you in the next video. And until then, namaste. Hey there. So your bonus tip today is all about sugar. You probably knew that this topic was coming. So bear with me. Yes, sugar is in everything, or so it seems. So I want to give you some tips so that you can start to get real about how much sugar is in your diet and some simple fixes that you can do right away so that you reduce the total amount of sugar that you have in your diet without feeling deprived. So first things first, when we start to eat healthier, certain things come up like smoothies. And this is a huge one. I want to make a smoothie. I want to use maybe a non-dairy alternative in my smoothie. And then all of a sudden you're like, ah, I got my almond milk. I got my rice milk. I have my soy milk. I'm going to add them to my smoothie. You take a sip of it and it's really, really, really sweet. Why is that? Well, with our non-dairy alternative drinks, very often there's a lot of sugar added to make it mimic some of the sweetness that you might remember from milk. So one really simple tip that you can pretty much take to the bank is that unless the front of the container says unsweetened, it's probably sweetened. (laughs) There's even sugar in things like ketchup. Okay. So sugar is literally ever everywhere. When we take something like rice milk and it's unsweetened and you turn over to the labels and you see total sugars, there's still sugar in this. Well, why is that? That's because rice is a carb and carbs are sugars. That's how your body breaks down carbohydrates into something basic that it can actually use for fuel. Carbs aren't a bad thing. We need them to move around this world, right? That's one of the building blocks of our fuel for our body. However, when we overload our body with simple carbs like sugar, we tend to take in more than our body actually needs to survive, and so it stores sugar as fat. One great way to get around some of the unnecessary added sugar is to opt for buying things that are already unsweetened. And if your palate doesn't love things that are less sweet, you still want to have some of that sweet flavor, then you can opt for adding your own sugar at home in the form of a sugar that is probably doing a little bit more for you. You want to get something out of the sugars that you're adding to your food. 
So I like to use things like honey, especially local honey. When you're working with honey, you're going to get minerals that come from the honey itself. And if you're going with local honey, this actually can help you with your allergies or any sinus congestion because you're working with pollens that are local to the community and where you live. You can also opt for, if you maybe like to add sugar to your coffee and you're not quite ready to go without it, you can add things like maple sugar or coconut sugar. So when you work with those types of sugars, they're closer to their most natural form. So again, you're at least getting some of the minerals. It's still sugar and your body will process it so, but you're getting a little bit more from it. So you can feel a bit better out of that teaspoon of sugar that you might put in your coffee. Now, if you are trying to wean yourself off of it, then give yourself some time. Maybe you typically start with two teaspoons of sugar in your coffee. Can you cut it down to one? Simple little fixes that we can do to reduce the overall sugar content in our diet really add up. There's a reason that we opt for sugar. So often it's because we're tired, right? Sugar is a quick way for us to feel a little more energized. And so if you notice that you're having what we call a sugar crash, you're crashing in the middle of the day, it's probably because you spiked and then you fell. So when you have those feelings of tiredness in the afternoon, it's helpful to start noticing if this is a trend and also notice what did you eat earlier before? Was your breakfast or lunch also full of proteins and fats, which we talked about in a previous video? So I want to leave you with some really simple, basic things you can do right away so that you are reducing your overall sugar load in your diet. And one simple trick is to make sure that you're opting for unsweetened beverages. If you need something sweet, then add the sugar yourself. That way you're in control of how much you're adding and you can opt for sweeteners like honey or a maple sugar or a coconut sugar that are giving you a little more bang for your buck. These are simple, easy to do things that you can do right away and you're gonna start noticing the results. You're doing a great job with this challenge and I am so excited to be there with you step for step. Keep up the great work. I can't wait to power up practice with you. So if you feel like you want to dive right in, I encourage you to do so. You can join me on Amazon Prime Video. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus. Download now for free.